What's up my friends? My name is David Klein. I'm the founder and executive director and head experience designer of Legends Baseball and Softball Camps. We are the only dedicated registered baseball and softball camps franchise in the entire United States. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to set up your season for success. I coach and guide and do coaches clinics for a number of little leagues throughout Northern California. And what I've noticed is that most adult volunteers, coaches, don't really understand the phased approach that you need to take when setting up your season. If you are a coach, if you are a parent volunteer trying to figure out how to set up your kids for success, a sequential regimented progression so that you can help your kids go from where they are when they enter the season to leaving the season as reliable, confident, and passionate baseball players and lovers, this video is for you. And if you're concerned, if you're feeling a little lost out there as a coach, that you're spending too much time with your practice plans, looking some things up, or you feel like you don't know enough about baseball to impart the wisdom necessary to develop your players, I'm here to tell you that you do know enough because you don't need to know a lot. All you really need to know is how to set up the environmental constraints necessary so that your kids can learn from the game itself. The ball in the game can be your best teacher. You don't necessarily, as a coach, need to be guiding your children and coaching them every single step of the way. We as coaches have gotten very used to this interventional coaching methodology where we gotta coach every single moment of every single pitch of every single day, and we don't need to do that. Sometimes kids develop best when you give them a little space, a little time, a little encouragement and patience, and that's all it takes. I see a lot of players in Northern California, in particular where everybody wants to push their kids to be the next Buster Posey, that believe that pushing their child and having them play up in a game like baseball is the only way for them to develop skill. And I'm here to tell you that you're absolutely wrong. In fact, your child may develop better if he's a big fish in the small pond, focusing on fun first, developing a love of the game of baseball, and if they develop a love of the game of baseball first, then they'll stay in the game long enough and commit in the way that is necessary for them to actually build and develop real baseball skills. Phases of your season. So for me, and for you, and for your kids, you wanna think about cutting your season into thirds. Phase one, for your season is gonna be about culture building and connection. Phase two is gonna be game preparation and you're moving into situational defense. In phase three, you wanna make sure that you're not burning your kids out by the end of the season. So the third phase and how you're gonna end the season is ensuring that they are still having a blast while out on the field with you. Phase one, that in Northern California is typically gonna be in February, March, maybe into April, and that's all about getting to know your kids. Dusting off the cobwebs, connecting with them on an individual basis, and identifying the little things that each child needs to do to get from where they are right now to leaving your program a significantly better player than when they came in. So doing things like team bonding events and private work, individualized instruction, doing things that are slow and going through the basics of baseball, going over things that they've probably learned before, but reiterating them and going over them again so you don't need to go over them ever again. The biggest problem I see with most little league parents and coaches is that they start the season, they're throwing kids on the mound, they're lacing ground balls to them, they're throwing live batting practice on the first practice of the year. Coaches, don't do that. Not only are you risking injury in doing that, you are setting them up for failure because quite frankly, they're not ready to throw the ball off across the diamond. If you throw them at, at home plate on the first day of practice and have them hit a moving pitch and they haven't swung a bat in a couple months, well, they're gonna be going home and they're not gonna be feeling so good about themselves because they couldn't get the ball past the pitcher. So you need to take a phased approach. We wanna crawl before we walk. We wanna walk before we run. We wanna run before we sprint. We want a phased approach to how we develop our abs. So the first week, for instance, we simply want to talk about how to step up to the plate correctly, how to get in a proper stance, how to line up to the plate, how to line up our knuckles, what our first move is going to be to the ball. But anytime that we ramp it up too fast, not only are we risking injury, we're putting them in a situation where they are not going to be failing successfully. We want them to be failing confidently, failing forward. And at the start of the season, when they're just dusting the cobwebs off, that's not the right time for it. They're supposed to be building their confidence. They're supposed to be putting the building blocks 
in place that they're turning into that stud ball player that we all know that they can be. After you dust the cobwebs off, you're learning your players, you're connecting with them, maybe you're sitting in some circles at the start of practice. After that is when you typically want to get into more situations and defenses and game preparations, cuts and relays, signs and all that. For those coaches who are like, what do you mean? All my, that's, that's what my kids need. They don't know where to throw the ball. Well, if they know how to throw the ball or know where to go on the field, they know cuts and relays and everything they got to do on the field, but they can't actually execute the skill like play catch in the right way and turn glove side and feel the ground ball properly, it doesn't matter if they know what to do on the field. First thing that you gotta do, like I said in phase one, is create the building blocks and the confidence and making sure that they understand the basics of how to feel the ground ball, how to hit a baseball, how to catch a pop fly, first and from there you can ramp it up phase two that's when you're getting into april maybe late may depending or early may depending where you're at that's where you're going to start live pitching live defense hitting off of live pitchers and getting ready for actual game play lastly at the end of your season the last third of your season that is typically when kids begin to burn out i like to recommend that coaches actually take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit stop with all this interventional coaching methodologies where we're coaching and pushing and non-stop and we actually focus on things that are fun first and yes you can still have fun while developing skills you can do things like competitions where they're practicing and competing with a particular skill and they're focusing on learning that skill but they're actually competing at the same time and when my coaches come up to me and they say hey coach dave captain fun my kids are just not focusing i usually go well did you make a competition out of it and they're usually like ah yeah, I should have made a competition of it. I don't know what I was thinking. Coaches need to make a competition of literally everything. Your kids want to compete and we want to teach them how to compete to win. So make a competition out of everything. So phase one, connection, learning your kids, the basics. Phase two, that's more game preparation, live defenses, timing, live pitching, live hitters and all that. And phase three is when you typically focus more on fun first things, identifying what we did well, what we didn't do last time and what we could do better in the next practice to get ready for our upcoming game. And those are the three approaches that you wanna take when you're developing your your athletes throughout the course of the Little League season. Thanks so much for watching. If this helped you in any way, please subscribe or follow, hit the link and stay locked in with us because we got lots more content coming your way just like this. And if you're interested in starting a Legends Baseball or Camp franchise or Speedball League, hit the link below, find us, reach out to us, uh, help at Legends Baseball Camps or LegendsSoftballCamps.com and we'll get right back to you. Thanks so much for watching and be legendary.